on this episode. I think going into this last rally, they're gonna go out and push as hard as they ever have to prove that we're still on it. Uh, this is probably the most challenging rally on the, on the circuit. Max, try six. Pretty much out of the gates, it's gives me flat out. Sharp, you're right, right five minus sharp. Right five minus sharp. That's ice, right. 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 This is Launch Control. How did we not crash? <laughs> November in the Pacific Northwest. It's the final event of the 2020 American Rally Association Championship. The Olympus Rally. Oh, we're here at uh, Olympus Rally. Uh, this is probably the most challenging rally on the on the circuit. So we'll see uh, see how Brandon fares. He should be a lot of fun out there. I've actually really never had a good result at Olympus, so I was pretty nervous going into Olympus, and so kind of anticipating that going in, being like, okay, well, not only is it Olympus, it's going to be Olympus at the worst time of year. You know, it's usually around right the beginning of the year or, or closer, you know, spring summer. Uh, so it's warmer. They have less fog, they have more daylight hours. We know we're gonna be running at night, running in the fog. It's one of the unique challenges of rally. No matter what the weather, the show goes on. Seminuk should be jumping in in a second. Uh, he's always doing homework, man. That guy's going over all his, all his uh, videos until the last second. With the rain and fog and night stages, you rely so much more on pace notes. In my mind, like, hey, I gotta make sure that these notes are perfect because there's a really good chance we're going to be driving blind on a lot of this stuff. Thank you. While Barry McKenna has clinched the title, second and third place in the championship are still to be decided. And both Subaru drivers want to end their season on a high point. It sets up an all-out battle. I think going into this last rally, it's still up to those two. Who's going to win? Who's gonna push harder? I think they're gonna go out and push as hard as they ever have to prove that we're still on it. Leading the way for the Subaru team is Brandon Semenuk and John Hall. The factory team rookies have impressed this year. Consistent when they needed to be. Outright fastest when the opportunity arose. Go. Okay, flat left and four, right plus 30. Uh, three left minus long, open. In his first season with the team, Semenuk has let events unfold as he builds confidence. But with a win now under his belt, he knows he can command a rally from the front. Pastrana, on the other hand, knows he needs a big win to end the year. He attacks on stage one, hoping to catch the rest of the field sleeping. Titans five and left three minus. He's fast, but Brandon is faster winning the stage by 1.2 seconds over McKenna. It's clear everyone has brought their A game. We were going flat out, but there's a lot of times where if we weren't in a battle, we would have probably pulled it back quite a bit. On stage two, Brandon makes a mistake. Into. It's a small hiccup, but drops him two spots down the leaderboard. As rain saturates the road and the temperature drops toward freezing, the conditions are turning treacherous. As the road surface changes, grip levels can change in an instant. Five, 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 and right five minus sharp. You're right, right five minus sharp. Right five minus sharp. That's ice, that's Left five, right four, plus five, four minus. He did a good job to keep that on the road. Oh my God. Oh man, I am doing the best. I was like, why is he still going so fast and I'm calling a four? I've been locked up for a half of a mile. Both Subarus escape without disaster but are a little worse for wear as they arrive at the first service of the day. I mean, the first stage is pretty good. I, I had a really good go at it. I made a big push because I knew the second stage was going to be slippery. And I'm not that stoked on the second stage. I had a stall and I was sliding wide a lot of places, but 
It sounded like the other guys were having issues too. I just I just lost a little bit more time than they did. Second stage was muddy, sloppy, slippy. You know, I mean, we were all over the place. So it was a tough one. Um, it is, there's just no, no traction. So um, it's hard to know when you can go fast and when you can't. Uh, I went off pretty big on the, the second stage. Almost went off again. Uh, Rhea was yelling. She's like, slow down right four, slow down right four. I'm like, I, I can't do anything. So the drivers have done their first two stages. They're gonna go repeat these stages so we know what to expect right now. A uh, lot of standing water and really, really slick out there. So it's all about uh, shedding the water out of the tire grooves, trying to get that rubber into the ground to try and maximize grip levels right now. Hey, I really appreciate it. With extra tire cuts applied, the cars head out for another pass on the same stages that gave them so much grief the first time around. Now they know to expect the unexpected, but need to find the confidence to attack. But while traction seems to have improved, the amount of standing water has not. Turn right two right plus. plus. Yep, right two plus, yes. Half left three, 30. Right four plus. Slide right through water, 150. For Seminuck and Hall, they take advantage of the conditions. I was realizing that we were actually taking more time out of Barry on the stages that had a lot of water in the lines. It seemed like, you know, obviously his car is quite quick, but when there was water in the lines, he was having bigger issues. The Subarus were so stable, they had like good power and good grip that the water in the lines didn't affect us as much as they did him. So those are the stages I was making the most time. Right over 40 kinks, press slowly over 25. He wins stage three by two seconds and ties McKenna on stage four. A vast improvement from the first time around. Sorry about the last little, <laughs> no problem. I slowed too early for the four and then I was like, ow. Oh. The tire cuts are working, so they look to expand that strategy. So we look at these edges here, to see how they're wearing. We put some cuts in here, and we put a cut in here, and it was definitely an improvement. So we're taking that theory, and we're gonna open it up even just a little bit more. See the difference here? So it's just another step in what we think we could, uh, we could do. We're, we're real close to, to the base. But we made a lot of mistakes, uh, so we need to make up some time tonight. It's gonna be a tough night, but uh, we'll, we'll get it done. With night coming, the conditions are slated to get worse. Falling temps, more ice, more rain. McKenna still holds a lead of 20 seconds, so the Subarus have to push the limit. A recipe for mistakes. Four right minus long, 40. Left, four left, minus. It's a delicate dance in the mud and ice. Seminuk finds the tipping point first. Opens 30, slowing, tightens, hug three onto Slippy Bridge. Oh my God, what are you doing? It's okay, just put it into. A lucky escape, but the clock never stops ticking. Pastrana's in the same boat. The conditions are terrible, but he needs some stage wins. Deep puddles are wreaking havoc. Mud and fog hamper visibility. Left three, 30. Right five minus, 100. Unfortunately, we had a lot of small leaks. Um, we had a lot of stuff that was making us a little bit more soaking wet than everybody else. That was even possible. And that created more fog. Our body temperatures created more fog. At the end of the day, that's rally. Everyone's gonna have issues. They adapted better than, than we did. Come on, car. <laughs> The conditions are as bad as they've ever seen. A little too much water. <laughs> Good uh, well, we did that. Good job, Good right. job. Right, right, right. Uh. They clear the stage intact. By day's end, Seminuk trails the leader by 18 seconds. Pastrana, another 36 behind him. We just rolled in, so you think it's all coming from the... I'm getting yeah, right, right. soaked from the roof vent, and yeah. she's, her notes are even sticking together now because she's got so much water pouring in her door set. In the door so, so. We're spoiled. We've been having such a easy go with these beautiful weather rallies. Right. We're being punished for it all. Water, man, there's a lot of it. So it's, 
unfortunately getting into the car in a few spots and there's just enough water coming in right now that it's condensating inside the car and fogging the windscreen. Uh, so even with a heated screen and the blower on, I mean the driver's getting wet, it's crazy. So all that fog means he can't, he can't see real well and uh, it's affecting the performance right now. So we gotta try and figure that out. Pretty much everywhere, everywhere there's a hole, the water's coming in. It's so bad the heated screen can't even keep up now. It's the worst I've ever seen it. I thought our pace was good, but we just made some mistakes and it, and it cost us pretty huge. Had like a, a pretty pretty fast spin and got pinned up against a tree, so I had to back up and get going again. And unfortunately we lost like one of our light bars in the make in the in the happening of that. So we had even less light than the stage before. Brandon had his issues, I had my issues. I'm sure that Barry had his issues. Um, but at the end of the day, they did a better job through the night stages of keeping competitive, and those guys did a better job of making the best of what they had. On the other side of the country, with a year to wait for Rallycross to resume, the focus is on making the most of a year without racing. My injury is going to be a part of my life forever. I've had to do substantial just lifestyle changes to, to accommodate having a, a compromised spine now. I went from basically being a, a cyclist to a runner. You know, bone density is going to be something I need to focus on. And I can gain that by lifting weights or CrossFit type stuff, which isn't me. I don't want to be big. I like being small. Running is the natural high impact sport I can do for endurance. And so I've had to relearn how to run and that was a huge challenge. That was probably the biggest and hardest thing I've ever done in my life actually because when you're trying to neuromuscularly change the way you run, uh, it's not easy. You want to see my muscles? I can't say enough about everybody at the team and Subaru for how much they've supported me through the, the accident and the recovery and all that. You know, I'll drive a Subaru for the rest of my life. But this is the suit when they cut it off me. And I went from being in a 10 out of 10 pain with my driving suit on to a 10 out of 10 pain and naked in like half a second. It was like a quick pit stop. Strapping into the race car and racing in anger for a checkered flag is like something I've been looking forward to since like the moment I re that I knew I could race again. This is uh, the iRacing simulator. It was built very specifically just for iRacing. He has been unbelievably positive, unbelievably steadfast. A lot of my friends and the people that I'm racing with, you know, they're all getting to race their race cars and all that. It's got a SimuCube direct drive uh, wheelbase, so the force of the steering wheel is super realistic. Any kind of like sim racing that we all do is all done on this thing. We don't want to stop. We expect that we're going to be doing Rallycross again in the future, and he wants to be ready. We want to be ready. The car keeps needing development, and we're not going to stop as long as, as long as he's willing to get in the car. We're going to put him in it. Scott Speed is a very, very good sim racer. He was one of the guys who helped them set up the actual dynamics and physics of the Rallycross cars uh, within iRacing. So he has a ton of experience, and he's really, really good at it. See, so blew to that corner. That's typical from Connor. <laughs> and then, oh, he's gonna go, I'm gonna take the Joker. <laughs> Final round for your All-Star Invitational. The last race of the season, we're in Sonoma, which is a, was a pretty hard course, actually, because there's a lot of dirt on it. Oh, here we go. We go green for the final round. Good start from Scott Speed. Speed has track position. He's very quick in his machinery. So it looks like both Scott Speed and Ottinger will head towards the feature race. We're just having a good time racing. We reverse the grid every time we go race, so I gotta start from the back. Everybody's not taking it so serious. That's what makes it enjoyable. Okay, now we go. My strategy for this week is I'm not even gonna go off the line. I'm gonna let everybody crash. I'm gonna sort of pick my way through it and then try to run down the leaders. <laughs> and we go green from Sonoma for the final time. Bit of carnage already. Scott oh. Speed's kept it easy. For me, there's not much difference to the sim than just actually being able to feel the car and having real physics. There is Scott Speed with a poised pass on Stefan Wilson. The mental reps that you're doing and the decision process that I'm making when I'm racing is the exact same. 
he's a very precise <laughs> racer, is Scott Speed. He's very consistent. I think it will become more and more of a standard process in the future that you start to use sims to develop young talent and then start to assess which of those people can make the change into the real world. It's just too good an opportunity to pass up. And Speed will head through the final corner. Scott Speed ends up third. That's funny. Well, there you go. We didn't get crashed, but you can't do anything when you start behind the guys. At the beginning of the year, everybody was sort of sim racing online. There was no racing for anybody. You know, we're always going to remember 2020. <laughs> Back in the Northwest, the weather has improved, but the previous day's downpour has forced organizers to shorten the rally. Olympus Rally Day 2, definitely liking the conditions a lot better today. It doesn't look like we're going to have as much water in the vehicle, um, unless the water crossing today. There's, I mean, It was a pond we went across a couple days ago. Uh, I think we can hit probably around just over 100 miles an hour when we hit it, which should just skip us right across like a rock. It's a pretty big risk, but it's about a 12 second swing if you take it or don't take it. You know, we're going to go like hell still and uh, have a lot of fun while we're doing it. In theory, I learned a driver said that at 36 mile an hour, the vehicle can't hydroplane. Um, it all depends on how wide the tires are, how much the car weighs. It's just a pretty light vehicle, so we should be fine. Though the weather looks better, the team hasn't left anything to chance. Yeah, last night was a challenge. We had fogging on the screen, so today's a fresh start. The boys have added a few things to the car to help with that and some mods. That should help with uh, not flooding the engine and we can go flat through it and see how we go. That's awesome. That looks really cool. On the last leg of the rally, there's so much fogging they couldn't see out. Uh, so we we're looking for a quick fix. Um, so we came up with a windshield wiper attached to a spatula from our RV. And then we smashed a broom used to clean the truck and put that together. That pretty up and it was like, oh, you it cleared everything. It's the final day of competition for 2020. They've got some ground to make up, but this team has its sights set on ending the year in the winner circle. All right, dollar station. Let's get it done. <laughs> Three, two, one, go. 20 left five. Pastrana is the first to find out exactly how much water is left. 30, water right five plus. It's not exactly dry, but compared to a day ago, it's much more manageable. Pastrana is at 10 tenths in hopes of mounting a comeback. Seminuk is also on the attack. He wants back in the fight just as much as his teammate, though he approaches it from a different angle. The first stage was interesting because there was like the big water puddle. I knew Travis was definitely gonna hit a flat out and I knew Barry wasn't gonna go slow through it. I'll play it safer than those guys in this big water crossing the first stage. I'll probably lose the stage if they make it through okay, but if they hit this thing and they have issues, then all suddenly like I could have a big gain. He's taking a gamble, but if you always do the same as your competitor, nothing will change. Left six minus 100. Pastrana has pushed hard, ignoring the risks of the water crossing. Travis being Travis, he's just like, oh yeah, you'll just hydroplane over that, no problem. But he makes little progress on the leaderboard. Lines four, and left five fast. Flying finish, 150. Yep, got it, mate. Felt good, well done, mate. We didn't feel the water, we felt the bump after the water. <laughs> the bump after, I didn't expect that. Both Subarus clear the stage, but the leaderboard stays consistent. We're here waiting for uh, them to come in. They just did an 11 mile stage. This was the big one with the water splash, so we're hoping there wasn't a ton of damage on that. We haven't heard anything. Um, we're being optimistic, and here they come now. Oh, like first gear. Okay. Yeah, I went, I went right down. Travis hit a flat, Barry hit it like me. I definitely made a mistake there. That was probably all the time lost. Sure. Yeah. But whatever. I mean, we're not, we're not really... Nothing wrong with playing it safe. Yeah, we're not really in like a fight right now, so it's not a big deal. And if those dudes broke the cars doing it, then we would be in a different situation, but yeah, I know. I think he took it easy through the water splash, so there's no damage with that. Uh, so kind of just a general check over. It is still pretty nasty out there, but uh, all the protection on the car is holding up and everything else, so I think we're good. It, did, it, it could have been 50 feet deep, it wouldn't have mattered. Yep. We didn't, there was no water flow up over the hood. Ah, good. We know the road's pretty well now. We made some good changes, so don't change a thing. Okay, okay. so thanks. Perfect. Nothing out of the ordinary. No more rain, no more water in the car. Perfect.
just one final leg of stage is left, caution is put to the wind. The final stage miles of a year to forget are fading into the history books. But not before one last dance. I see. Robots are. Right five, <laughs> right five plus. Yeah, we push every second because you don't know when someone's going to get a flat tire. You don't know that someone else doesn't have the same issues. You don't know when someone's going to slide off or hit a puddle or do something uh, with the car. So you keep fighting. Road wide, 17. Travis isn't the only one determined to never give up. Brandon may not have the race win in hand, but he's earned critical experience he didn't have just a few days ago. Remember, caution, see big water, keep right. For some, it's a puddle. For others, is a metaphor. Proof you can go all out, that your team has your back. The stage miles run out before they can catch McKenna. Whoops. Slowing right five plus, tightens four. And left five fast, over finish. Seminuk takes second. 100, left five. Pastrana third. Good job, mate. In both the event. Now's, now's the around. In the final championship standings. In Vermont, a few weeks later, the entirety of the season comes into focus. We are at the Sunset Drive-In Movie Theater in Colchester, Vermont for the uh, world premiere of Gymkhana 11 as well as episodes one and two of season eight for Launch Control. A team holiday party at the local drive-in theater is a moment to celebrate everything this team has accomplished. A drive-in movie theater is perfect for uh, pandemic celebrations, so everything's gonna be a little bit different. Holidays are gonna be different. We're, we're gonna take what we can get in terms of being able to get together and have a good time. The whole team's here at a drive and it's snowing, so it's amazing for us. It's quite a little holiday right here just before Christmas. I was really proud of the team this year. Maybe more so than in a normal year where there's a championship to celebrate. You might lose some races in a bad year, normally. You might not win a championship in a bad year. But the one thing that I was staying awake at night worrying about was what is gonna happen to the people that make this team live and breathe every day because we just have no clue what the future is going to hold. And that our, our commitment and my statement to the staff was just make sure you keep the team together. This is a family, you know. I'm very happy to say um, they had work through the whole time. Subaru has been super loyal and their rally heritage is just there. It's never left and they're just like, nope, no matter what, we're going to be there. We're going to make this happen. In a difficult year, it's a season to be proud of. Seven podium finishes and two wins in just four events. I think the takeaway from this is that we will find a way to rally. We will find a way to do what we love to do. Uh, we have an amazing company in Subaru backing us. We all want to be here so badly. We we're able to get some in as much as we'd love a full season. We want us to come back and we'll just re respect that time we get in the car even more. There are tons of great things that happened in 2020. Tons of great things that happened. We were able to do the races. We still came out and brought Travis back to the team and back to the sport full time. Feels good to be back. We lost a car this year. We were able to rebuild or make a new car. and We had a shell and we got it together in three weeks. It's amazing. And we, we still came out and won rallies. We still came out and, and developed a new driver. He's just growing every event, and I think you can expect him to keep growing. He's uh, potentially on equal ground to Travis. He's one of the, the best drivers I've ever uh, driven with. I went as hard as I could to show them that I deserved the seat, and I wanted to feel like I was one of those dudes up there as well. We brought Scott back to the car, and for him to come back to us is a big piece too. The focus on one year ends as attention turns to 2021 with confirmed programs in Nitro Rallycross and the American Rally Association Championship. You know, we didn't get to race this year, we'll have to wait till next year, but the good news is, is the racing that we will get to do next year, it just looks like it's gonna be better. I think it's gonna be one of those things where uh, I waited longer, but it's gonna mean more when I get back in there and do it actually. As many see 2020 as a year to forget, this team sees it as a year to build from. 
I know Travis is going to be chomping at the bit to get the championship next year, and I want to be in the battle with him and Barry, so like, we need to take advantage of every opportunity we're given. So, yeah, I'd expect uh, some really good fights next year. I still believe going into 2021 that we're going to be the team to beat. With any luck, this season will be the entire year. Um, we'll get put in that bottom of the nine situation, we're going to come out firing. I just think a team that succeeds all the time, it doesn't know as much about itself as a team that overcomes adversity. Because when you overcome adversity, you discover what you have within you. And I'm really proud of what this team found out about itself this year. With racing season complete, the workshop still has one more special project on the schedule. Next time on the two-part Road to Gymkhana Launch Control Special. Action, action, action. I'm doing it in Annapolis, my hometown. Yeah. I saw the wing, I was like, oh my gosh, it's like on the car. There is no rule. It's the nicest car that VSC has ever produced. Design a car with no limits is a dream come true for us. It raises the bar again for Gymkhana. It's the car you want. It's like nitro physics. Always more speed, always. Epic drift shots with proximity to death. <laughs>